How does Warren Buffett really make his investment decisions? We're talking to Alice Schroeder, the author of the book Snowball and a former top-ranked Wall Street analyst. Alice, when you read the 10K, it really is, I got a call from my buddy. He said, there's this company you should check out. I went in for five minutes. I met with the managers. They were nice guys selling good products. We had the same values. I bought the company. Is that really the way it works? Uh, that's uh, a version of it, but what has happened uh, behind the scenes is if it's a steel company, he spent 70 years studying the steel industry. He's got, you know, 30 steel companies' financial statements in his head, and he's spent hundreds, if not thousands, of hours thinking about this business, including almost every day, updating himself on it. So when the financial statements come in, he looks at them and goes clickety click, and then he can make an instantaneous decision. And does he also have the process that he doesn't describe of, I got the call, the financial statements look good, I went down, and you know what, they were a bunch of jerks. And I thought they were trying to rip me off, and I said, the hell with that. Absolutely. And the other thing is he's trained bankers, including Byron Trott, you know, at Goldman Sachs, or formerly of Goldman Sachs. He's trained people to not bring him things unless they fit, including companies that are run by people that he'll be compatible with. So there's a screening that takes place before things ever come to him, which is part of the efficiency. And when the phone rings, is it Byron? I mean, is it Goldman Sachs a or somebody lot of it else? Is, it is. Yeah, yeah. And was it Byron when he bailed out Goldman Sachs last year? I that I can't. No, I that that was Lloyd. Blank. That may have been Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. Direct, go direct. Yeah, yes. That was Lloyd. I'm yeah. not calling on behalf of somebody else. I'm yeah. calling on behalf of me. So, what do the other 11 people at Berkshire Hathaway do if it's 11? Now? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, well, there's a couple of secretaries, and then there is no HR department, there is no PR department, there is no investor relations person, there is no head of comms, there is no internal audit, there is no general counsel, nothing. They are uh, CFO, a uh, couple of accounting people, and a bond trader, and uh, a couple of, actually it's all accounting people. That's it. What does a bond trader do? Well, he has a, a Bloomberg sitting on his desk and you know he, he has some limits and he knows what to do and he, he runs the bond portfolio. Warren tells him. So he's he goes, trading for the book. Yeah, though. he's trading not, for the book, yeah. He's that, not a Berkshire Hathaway bond. No, the insurance portfolio, yeah. That's it. I mean, it's amazing. And so Warren always tells this story pretty much every time he speaks about investing that when he went through Columbia, the first thing he did was call his professor Ben Graham up and said, I'll work for you for free. And Ben Graham said, well, you're overpriced, but okay. Why is it that every MBA in the country isn't calling up Warren and saying, I will move to Omaha and work for you for free? Or are they? They are. He gets letters constantly from people who do that. But when you read these letters, and I've read quite a few, typically they don't offer that much to him. Uh, you know, the real value is what would he get that he couldn't get somewhere else. He doesn't need help investing. There's been one person that he's made that deal with, and the guy was a, basically somebody that he could send out on projects and he could do M&A type work with no supervision. And so what he's not telling you in that charming and self-deprecating story is that Ben Graham actually thought, you know, this is a smart kid. And Absolutely. this is actually a trade that benefits me too. That's the deal. You know, you, he made himself useful. He didn't require any supervision, and he brought more value than than you know he could possibly take away, even at a price of zero. Last question on the Goldman Sachs deals or the bankers deals. So, I mean, what percentage of those is he turning down? Well, I you know Warren has typically turn down, I would say, four out of every five things that are shown him, but uh, he's gotten better at training people to only show him things that make sense. Um, so, you know, in the financial crisis, you know, he did Goldman, he did GE, he did Harley, but, you know, he turned down Lehman, Bear, Morgan Stanley, you know, the, all the other banks. I think that ratio probably holds. Great. Thank you, Alice.